Hello, everyone. This is Jay from Tiny Wonderland, and this is not your normal intro to a Tiny Wonderland episode. And the reason for that is because the intro corrupted when I was filming it. And although I tried to retrieve it several times, I was not successful in doing so. This is a full disclaimer that the following episode may contain content unsuitable for young individuals as well as things that generally wouldn't be considered PC for the general public. This is a completely uncensored interview. And honestly, I wish more people in the world were like the man we're about to meet. So I hope you guys enjoy this. We're going in a hole. Hang on. That's okay. We're in a hole. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, that was a lot quicker than I thought it was. We are cooking up some bird's eye. Looks pretty good so far. Should be a few minutes before this is really good. We can't go with chains without a just drag her up the hill. We'll worry about chains later. We call this a CTC, which stands for Cargo Trailer Conversion, or Cargo Trailer Camper, or Cargo Trailer Crap, whatever you want to call it. It has all kinds of names. In case you're wondering what four-week-old poop looks like after it's been chemically treated, and there's your answer. A mom to 17 children, I would thought you might have had like 30 of those cards. Oh, I, this is just for two days. Um, what a coulda Shit happens. <laughs> oh yeah. Or you change your mind forty-five thousand times about what you, I just changed my mind again. You'll see that here in a few minutes. Okay. Um, actually, you'll see that right now. I just I removed that. The first day or second day I got here. Oh, I saw you up on the roof. I was wondering what you were doing up yeah, there. Yeah, I okay. took that out. That Removing that, which I don't like. I, whenever I opened it, I always got wet because it retains water a little bit. Yeah. But it also doesn't leak, so it's a good hatch. Uh, it's Jimmy Hinch's hatch now whenever he comes to get it. And so I closed that off. Removing that hatch that I never use adds a whole nother panel. So that, that adds almost 400 watts of solar by getting rid of that. Yeah, I know in my configuration, I was like, if I had just put this this way and this way, I could have put it in the panel here, but it sure. didn't didn't happen, so. And then, um, while we're on this side of the bus, on the outside, the the silver thing up here, this aluminum. I was going to ask you, is that like for airflow? That's my transmission cooler. Oh, you're kidding me, on the uh, side of a bus? Okay, so you're, yeah. most all of us in these mid-size engines, and I guarantee I can walk down every single one of these buses. <laughs> And the the transmission is going to cool through the radiator. Okay. Which means your radiator on our buses have to do double duty. Okay. Which is unnecessary. Uh, for a couple of hundred dollars or um, the, the radiant heat that you've already removed from your bus. Yep. You can turn that radiant heat into a transmission cooler. Remove your transmission... Uh, cooling from the motor then your motor only has to cool itself and the engine um, and then you can let the transmission cool itself secondary so this here is a is a metal box um, that I got for free and on the other side of that is a I don't remember how many cubic foot per minute fan but it's for a engine radiator yeah, like um, a big, big... And then what's inside of this uh, box in there is a, a plate radiator that... Uh, it's What do they call it? It's the most efficient one. It's a plate and something. I can't remember. I have to look it up. Anyhow, it's got a fan, so it pulls the air in through the side of the bus, and the louvers kind of help. I made these because they're pretty. So this is all custom? Yeah, it is. Okay. This is all Zacified, I guess. Zacified. That's going to be yeah. our new word, Zacified. My, my girlfriend calls it Zacified. I think I definitely can see that being yeah. a good word for you. So I figured the air would pull in on its own. I spaced it up three quarters of an inch okay. so that this wasn't the only place air was coming in that just l- makes it look good it does point. i would i thought it was like a ram jet the, or something the, the fan on the back some folks in there uh i think seattle washington hooked me up with these 
Um, I have to look for the, the I got links for days. Um, but it pulls the air across here and I've got a fan. Respectively, it's hooked up to a thermostat, but I don't trust it yet. I'd rather just flip the switch on. Okay. But I know I need the thermostat in there eventually for the winter time because okay. your transmission has to get so warm to work in the winter time. Because diesels have trouble starting in the winter. Well, that's Funny. it's a different. It was same <clears throat> same kind of idea. But okay, your transmission has to get so hot before it'll function. Okay. And if you're if you've got the fan on full blast in the winter time, your transmission is going to be sluggish or not function. So it has to get to at least like 140 degrees to function properly. Um, I would put the fan in line at like 175, 180, and that's what this thing is supposed to do. Okay. But I don't fully trust it yet. So what I'm going to do, instead of having me manually switching it, I'm going to put it back over to the thermostat, and I'm going to fix the transmission temperature gauge. And yeah, I need a thermostat I, I on my a, tiny home. I got a water heater. And then this is the, the diesel heater for the cab that I, okay. just, I just moved this because oh, okay. the installation of You got a beer, some ice cream still. I though. broke the fuel filter, so oh. I have to get a new one. Okay. So that keeps it from dripping on the ground and doing harm you. to the environment. Um, I, I drained the tank already for, to move it because I knew yep. I was going to have to move it in and out. I built a new panel. I made a makeshift metal brake so I could bend it. Um, David, a couple doors down, helped me with weight so that I could bend it. Um, and then I, I attached it to a part of the bus, a okay. frame part of the bus. It's kind of in a shitty angle to fill it up, but such is life. <laughs> yeah, door, I was going to say, that's a really bad place The door was to, already there. That's a bad place to fill that. <laughs> yeah, the door was already there. I couldn't fight it that bad. I and couldn't. yellow's diesel, right? Yellow's diesel. Yellow's diesel, blue is water, red is fuel. Yes, sir. Unless you and really want to have fun like me and you put uh, and then you this, put water in the red cans. I've done that before. <laughs> this is obviously my water tank fill and then my city water. Yep. This little donkey dick helps a lot. Okay. Um, Hunky dick. <laughs> because usually the, the hose only fits in there so far. And oh. then it falls out. Uh, the, the humble showed me this. Some so you can mine. throw that in there and then hook that to the... Yeah, you hook it to your hose and you stick it in there. Then it gives you it gives you a little bit of control. You're not trying to fill it up fast anyhow. No, I gotcha. Your system can only burp so fast. That's true. Um, this is my toilet fan. Yeah, I was wondering what that was. It runs all the time. It's just for the compost. That's for the toilet. composting to get the air out, yeah. Um, I was wondering about this. Down <laughs> is this here, your urine tank? No. This is, is the gray water. I built this out of a, uh, this is a water pump, a water well pump. Um, which Jeez, is I'm crawl. That's, that's a water tank, all right. Yeah, it's 36 gallons. But I mean, it's a beast. It's only 30, it's not that big. It's only 36 gallons. No, I mean, it's, it's metal. Most tanks are made out of plastic, polypropylene. Well, <laughs> If I hit something, I don't want to break it. You wouldn't break it. I can no. assure you of that. This is plumbed to the house. This is oh. that that goes straight to my uh, my inside pump. Okay. For water for the dog or whatever. This is actually the drain. I did flat so that when I boondock, yeah. When you're not draining, it lays flat. You don't have to worry about that three inch crap yeah. laying on the ground. It's on a gate valve, so realistically, I can trickle it going down the road if I wanted to. And then I do have urine plumbed into it. Oh yeah, I drop my when I leave my, whenever I'm going to leave my fresh. I throw. I have yeah. a I have a my, valve. I throw and just run down the road. People are like you can, you're leaking. I know. <laughs> you can see where the urine comes in on this side. Oh the yeah. Floor. Yeah. My long term intention is to put a, a valve on it. Okay. So that I can divert it from my gray water tank to a, a drain on the outside of the vehicle so I can put a jug under there so that I can actually drain my gray water at an RV place if I stayed somewhere. Okay. That way I could drain gray water because they consider urine to be part of your black system. Um, technically. Which is not though, is no, it? No, it's not really. In a urine in dishwater is gray. Technically. Technically. Techni but, but it comes from your toilet, so. If you so. go to an RV park and you tell them you have urine in your gray, they're going to shit. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It, it's, okay. It, technically, the the big RV companies consider urine part of your black. Right. So, it, I have the the mindset to do a diverter to where I could put it in a smaller jug, so okay. I can go pour it in a toilet for them. So right. I can actually stay at an RV park and not have my urine go to my gray tank. I gotcha. It's just to facilitate other people's needs. Okay, yeah, you know, sure. And it's not that hard for me to do because I built the whole thing. And there's your big baby. There's Woo! my little generator. The, that wind... Is that a Generac? 
No, that's the Win 3800. I've never even heard of it. Okay. Wow. Um, Home Depot, Lowe's sells it. Okay. I like it better than the Predator. That thing looks like it's huge. I like it. Well, the Predator is hard looks to like move. It's the same size as the Predator. It, it pretty much is. It's a 3800. The Predator's when... a 35. The only reason I like this one is movability. Okay. Because that handle makes it. Yeah, I just picked it, mine up like a suitcase. Yeah, if somebody had to move the Predator 3500 from here to that yellow bus, they'd hate life. If, oh, the 3500. Yeah. We're talking about two different things. Yeah. I'm talking about the 2000. Yeah, this is it's like a suitcase. Oh yeah, this is huge compared to that. Oh, you know, I was under I was like, why is he saying that it would be hard to move? No, I lift no, that no, thing no, all the no, time. The, the I know the 35. It's yeah, the one with the cage on yeah, it. Yeah, this yes. is the one that's comparable. That's the only thing comparable in size is that one to this. I wish I had the 3800, but the 3800 would be so much more to carry than yeah, the it is a 3800. No, the 35 the 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 Predator. I, that, I would throw that one away and get that one. That one's easier to move. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the original battery box. Okay. Oh, wow. There's nothing even in here. Well, I'm, some stuff. I'm, Hang on, I'm currently murdering the lead acid battery for house use until I get my solar. The poor thing. Uh, I, I keep it nice and highly charged. Um, well, okay. The battery that I'm using for house battery until my solar gets here is what runs the lift on the other side of there. It goes in there generally. So I'm just looking at the back of this and... I don't know a lot about school buses, um, but it looks to me like instead of extending your back, you shortened you shortened your wall. I just pushed it in, like uh. So well, this this is the original frame. Yeah, the, the you just pushed your space back. The original frame comes to about here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so instead of having to make an extension, you just left I lost pushed, living space. Yeah, I, lo bit. I lost manufactured space yeah okay but I, I didn't instead of in extending and tail, you still made a gate well yeah but i didn't want the extra tail whip okay you know people that add on extensions to their bus great and dandy fine whatever you want to do but you're adding behind your tires so you're adding tail whip like over here on olive yeah they added a five foot deck on the back so he put his motorcycle yeah cool he didn't have a lot of tail whip. He only had like three and a half, four feet behind the tires. When you say tail whip, are we talking about, uh, 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 what's the other one they call it? There's another name for tail whip. Tail swing. Tail, tail swing. swing. Thank you, yes, tail hunt. swing. Yes. Okay, so the the more you add behind the tires, yep. the more ash you have swinging behind you. Gotcha. Yeah, I found that out when I broke, uh, to, took Brett's trailer to Brunswick. I, I wanted the deck space for my motorcycle or Whatever the hell you want to put there. Yep. But I didn't want to add that swing. Um, like, you have to learn that your truck's four foot longer or five foot longer so you don't take out stuff. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can take out, you can hit the back of your vehicle on a tree if you don't pay attention to your swing. Yeah. You also have to be go out further before you turn. Oh. Uh, mm. That's respective. But, um... <laughs> As far as your ass swinging around is what yeah. I'm worried about at this point. So tell us, what, if you did sacrifice living space, what is, what's up here? What do you use this for? This is a shop, man. Let's I, see. I, I'm I curious. Do, I can do everything Brett can do. I don't, he has a couple tools I don't have. I had a, I had a, a 2,000 square foot shop that I converted down to 8 by 8 okay. Now we're up here standing pretty high. Did you elevate the bottom as well as the top of the bus? Oh, no. You mentioned this something is, when... This is a couple inches higher than the top of your bumper. Well, you mentioned something uh, when we were doing the other tour. You mentioned something about that you'd done something to the bottom of the bus, too. Uh, I gave a little storage. Holy... F this was an old oil field, uh, like, skid for... Uh, I think a test pump or something. What is it? This rake, this extension cords. I see a this rake, is, okay, so shovels, so bolt. This is the end of the bus, original. And yeah, I, I see I, it. I essentially added, I don't know, eight inches. So you did add a little bit. Yeah, oh, eight inches. Okay, yeah. Not enough to even bother. You got a winch in there or come along? Come along, I guess. Uh, pole I saw. Here, let's move this extension. Wow. This got, is there's great. a pile of stuff in there. I didn't get Look at this. Wow. Yeah, there's a Oh wow! Yeah. Brett has Brian twice. 
Oh, I believe this it. This is a kindling splitter I built. Uh, oh my I word! I got I got stilts in there, hole diggers, <laughs> electric saw parts. I should probably get those out of there. They'll quit working. I got split malls. I got anything. Okay. Any yard tool that you generally would have, <clears throat> I already have it this year. And this isn't even a shop. We're just looking at it underneath no, this, this bus. This is potential for eight foot of storage. There's a you could put eight foot lumber in there if you had to. Okay. I took a center cross member out. Oh, so it goes back further? Well, the your frame has cross members all the way down <laughs> yep. to strengthen it, but I kind of added this three and a half, so I figured that was fucking strong enough. Okay. So I took that cross member out, which gives me eight foot of storage. Um, in the front, it's blocked off at another cross member. I have a piece of wood in there to keep stuff from sliding out. Wow. But it's, it's relatively out to the environment, but usually your yard tools end up being that way anyhow. Okay. All right, that's crazy. Uh, that weighs about 65 pounds. I ended up heavier than planned, but oh well. That then, lid weighs more than the bus, than this whole thing. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh... It's pretty sturdy. It bows a little bit, but not much. I mean, it's not going anywhere. What is this thing? Those are bifold doors out of buses. I've done... I've done nine, ten... Ten buses. Oh, these doors. are like the buses on on Mo's front door. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. them now. Yeah, Those you are, said that the other night, but I couldn't. I wasn't understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought you meant this was. I was like, what is? Yeah, it's the metal from bifold doors from my bus, um, from Dylan Tanner's bus, and from Frank and Shelly Moore's bus. Did you weld all this? Yeah, I weld. Oh wow. Okay. Zach's crazy ideas. <laughs> yeah. Um, no idea too crazy. We'll figure it out. The question I have for you, and we don't, and we haven't gotten in the buses. How inside. much do you weigh? How many, I have no fucking idea. Okay. I've never, Do you know what the, the dry weight of the bus was before you converted it? No. Okay. I didn't give a shit. 